Yeah. It just feels like there's a reaction to the um, damaging message of liberal feminism and how liberal feminism sort of denigrates masculinity, including healthy masculinity as toxic. So it's misidentifying problems that aren't problems. So then men are now kind of reacting to that, especially um, people like Andrew Tate and then young men are following him. They're reacting to that denigration with a puffed up macho, like um, kind of distorted uh, version of masculinity, which also what comes with that is often some really bad views about women. Yeah. Um, And some of their messaging in trying to refute liberal feminism is doing damage in other ways. Um, So these are often people who value like marriage and family. I don't know about Tate, but like these are people we're seeing online who do value marriage and family. They are reacting against hookup culture, which I totally agree is a terrible thing and should be uh, eradicated. But in this reaction space, they often sometimes have a very uncharitable message to women, particularly women who are like 30 and over. There's a lot of that's the big scapegoat. There's a lot of guys online who say, you know, if you're 30 and unmarried, you're done. You have an empty egg carton. You are no one's going to want you. Um, You screwed up your life by engaging in hookup culture and you're never going to find happiness and you're just you're damaged goods, they say, which is a really secular mindset because they're talking about women as if they're consumer goods and yes. like a product. It's a very like yeah. capitalistic consumer way of thinking about human beings. Um, and if you're, you know, not a secularist and you have like a spiritual framework, you would know that like you would probably believe in re- redemption and like forgiveness and genuine change in people. And um, you would just, would just never say that to somebody like so people aren't like goods that can be used up and damaged like 